All right, here we go with part two of the video. We're going to look at the performance. So we're going to look at the cutting and engraving of three main areas. We're going to look at plywood, leather, and acrylic. If you, if you missed the first portion, portion one of this video set is the actual feature walk around of both of these machines. Where we look at the size of the bed, um, you know, the Z depth, um, any special unique features that either one has. So it's a two-part video to get the full uh, comprehensive review, but let's go ahead and look at the performance. Okay, here's the end of the, the Omtech engrave. So we did an engrave and then we did a score with the words Omtech and then the, the model number. So we're gonna do the same next test over on the Thunder and compare the quality. I want you to take special note that we're gonna use the same settings. So this is gonna be 450 on the speed and 35 on the power for both. And the time that this one came in is 641. So we'll see how the Thunder does. time on this one looks like the time was four minutes and 28 seconds verification that we use the same settings 450 and 35 for not only the engrave but also the score all right let's take a look here and what our results are we've got the Thunder Nova 35 on the bottom and then we have the Omtech engrave and score on the top the time results for the Thunder Nova was 428, whereas on the Omtech, I think it was like six minutes and change. And then just verification that we're using the same settings. You have 450 for both and 35 on the power. So it looks like we, our tube is probably a little um, stronger on the Thunder, especially on the engrave portion. The scores look pretty close, the same as in color. So we can take a look there. All right, we'll move on to acrylic next. Okay, we're running an acrylic job. So this is the first one will be on the Omtech, and then after we're done with this one, then we'll take it over to the Thunder and see how it looks. That's probably a better view. It's hard to see through the, again, hard to see through the lens of the cover here. This job, we're doing our engrave at 500, speed 20 power, and then our cut is 15 speed, 75 power. Okay, our job just finished here, so we can zoom in a little bit and take a look at it. And then let's look at our time here on our controller. It says three minutes and five seconds. It's probably not the greatest uh, legibility here. But let's go ahead and see. It looks like it cut through, which is great. So I'm going to move it. All right, we're going to take this sheet of acrylic right here with same settings and take it over to the Thunder and see how it does. Okay, same settings. We're running it on acrylic. We're on the Thunder, same size, everything. Again, take note how easy it is to see through this. Thunder is done with the acrylic, so we'll move the head out of the way. All right, we'll look at both of these after I peel off the, the paper and see how the, the test results were. Now on to leather. Okay. 
All right, here's the results of the leather. So we're gonna clean this up and take a look at what it looks like as a final product. So we, on the Omtech, we did this two minutes and six seconds and you can see the settings are the same. Over here, our results, one minute, 16 seconds for the same, same instructions, same parameters, etc. And here's what we got. So we'll give it a clean. Got a little bit of a hanging chad on the Omtech one, but not enough to, to make it a big deal. We can pull that off. We'll get these cleaned up and uh, get the final results. Okay guys, I wanted to bring the final results outside to where it was natural light so you could take a look at this. So let's talk about just the Baltic birch alone. You can see on the engrave, the non-score part, it looks like the thunder tube had the edge. These are, again, reminder, these are the same settings. Everything is in focal. And um, so we're looking at the quality of the engraves. So it looks like the, the thunder has a darker burn on these. So you probably need to ramp up your tube settings, uh, your power settings on the Omtech. The scores look about the same. So I'm kind of happy with that. If we look at the acrylic, it really kind of was a bust here. The um, Omtech just barely scored it. I mean, it went through the paper, but it really didn't go through. So you would need to bump up the power for sure, absolutely, and tune in your settings on that one. Uh, this is what the, the Thunder one looked like. This is typical. Of course, I can't spell Thunder there, but um, this is typical acrylic look right um, what I use is the general standard settings and this even came from the thunder setting suggestion now let's look at the leather the Omtech kicked butt on the leather engrave it looks really good I mean it even looks like what I expect to see on a UV it's not real deep but it looks really nice very little cleanup on the engrave uh, the char setting that I this is the same setting for cutting that I do on the other one uh, let me see how they look. They're about the same. Um, the residue a little bit more on the thunder. Typically you clean this up with a cleaner or water or whatever. So I'm not worried about that char. That's typical of what I would see. But anyway, just wanted to give you the results of the, um, the settings test outside in the sunlight. Because sometimes it's more vibrant and you can see a little bit better. Okay guys, uh, here we are at a wrap up to the evaluation of the two machines. Again, we were looking at the Omtech 2440, which is the 100, with the 100 watt tube, and then comparing that to the Thunder Nova 35 with also the 100 watt tube. And why these two? Because they're kind of close in size wise. And if you're looking for a laser on the market and you're looking for something of that like size in these two brands, those are the two that you're likely gonna look at. So anyway, I wanted to kind of wrap up here and give you my final thoughts. I have up here kind of feature wins, and I want to just kind of walk down each side. First on the Omtech, uh, I have here very well crated. When I received that machine, um, that's one thing I noticed is that it was crated very well. It's kind of a weird nuance, but they use screws on all of the, um, the you know, holding the boards together, which is nice because it's easy to use a screwdriver, electric screwdriver, than crowbar to bust the crate apart. So I thought that was nice, um, a nice change for once. I've probably uncrated about eight lasers now. So you wouldn't really notice that much if you're not undoing a whole lot of these machines. But when you've done several, you start noticing the differences in the in how things are put together. So kudos to them. Omtech did a great job on the crate. Not saying that Thunder didn't, it just stood out as something that was very well put together. Even the plywood that they used was a thicker uh, grade, a better quality than what you normally see coming from China. Uh, the next kind of win over on the Omtech side is bed size. I mean, it's, it's a little bigger. You're getting about five inches of, of room. They both have pass-throughs, uh, but as far as the width on the bed size, it's a little bit bigger, right? So um, if you needed, if you were gonna consistently get jobs that were like 38, 39 inches, um, you know, you may be leaning towards that way. Uh, if you're looking at a thunder, you need to bump yourself up to probably a 51. Anyway, I gave the bed size the edge to the Omtech. 
And then the last one here on the OMTEC side is really where the, the wheelhouse or the sweet spot is for OMTEC, which is the price to get in. You are not going to get some of the bells and whistles that you get over on the Thunder Machines or some of the other brands, but that's what you know you're 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 getting. You're not getting uh, as high end a machine, but it's costing less. So if you purely were going to look at only price, right? Like I only have four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars to spend, then you probably need to seriously look at um, that as one of your options. So I gave that kind of a win over on. The ohm tech side so now let's look over at the thunder let's say uh you know you do have a little bit better budget and you're like well is the thunder worth spending the extra money on i'm gonna say absolutely yes and and some of the things that you see on the right side are some of the reasons why one for me is the visibility it's so much easier to look through a clear piece of glass just like your car window than looking out your heavy tinted back windows when you're driving um, so that, that's a no brainer for me, uh, just makes a big difference. I do like the dual air control system that the Thunder has. So when you're doing an engrave or cut, remember we walked through that, what that looked like. That's a bonus. You don't see that on a lot of machines. And I think it's a real plus that Thunder has that on their Nova line. The swappable lens, it's real common for you to do an engrave and then need to cut a up to one inch thick piece of material. So being able to swap that two inch to a four inch out is, is a feature that I think um, a lot of makers use and some maybe don't know about it, but it's, it's something that I use a lot in my shop and it's a major time saver. The next one is the chiller alarm. That is a huge plus if you screwed up and blown your tube. I've seen a lot of people doing that lately. Uh, last couple of weeks ago, I saw someone with an ohm tech forgot to turn on their their water pump and they started running their jobs and they blew their tube. So there is an, a chiller alarm set up on the laser system, on the thunder systems that it will alert you and not allow you to run a job and alarm will go off. So that's a huge feature that I think it's a safety feature that no one really thinks about until it's too late. The uh, next one on the list, the fire detection system. A lot of people that own thunders don't even know this, but that, a mechanism that if it detects smoke or fire, it will actually shut the machine off and prevents it from continuing to run the job, and which is which is adding more fuel to the fire, so to speak. That is another thing, kind of like the chiller alarm, where it's a safety feature that you don't really value it until something happens. That's a huge plus uh, as a feature win. The next one is Z-Depth. If you remember in our analysis, I think the Z-Depth was like either four or, let me look here, it was either four or five. Okay, it's 5.25 on the Umtech and around 9.25 on the Thunder. It's gonna be very common that you're gonna do some thick things. Um, ammo cans, a few other deals, you wanna be able to push that bed all the way down that you can. And honestly, I've pushed this Thunder 35 to 13 inches on the Z-Depth by taking out the blades. Uh, I didn't test that here. We're taking all the blades out because I wanted to do it just regular with the honeycomb. But the wind goes to the Thunder Camp for that because the Z-Depth is almost uh, five inches more. I'm sorry, four inches more. And then the last one uh, sounds kind of funny, cliche, ready to go out of the box. What I didn't tell you is when I first got the Omtech, I had to I had to realign all the mirrors and make sure everything was synced up to be able to operate it. And that's very common with the Omtech. You don't get it set up ready to go out of the box. You if you like to tinker and get everything tuned in and aligned, then then you know just be aware of that. Um, I had to spend probably a couple hours, maybe three, just getting things set up, aligned, things ready to go for the first time. Um, thankfully, there's a user community group, um, official OMTEC, uh, Cam Edwards, Edmonds runs that. A uh, great resource out there. You're going to leverage and, and need to leverage that a lot. Whereas on the Thunder, it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. You can be up and running in 30 minutes. Um, so, so that's kind of nice. I know I didn't, I double checked my mirrors when I got them from Thunder, but they were aligned and I didn't have to do anything. So the ready to go out of the box feature component is nice if you're new to this and you're you just you spent a lot of money on a laser and you want to get going. So that's kind of how I'm, I'm kind of saying the feature wins. 
the last one uh, really talks about time. Um, so let's talk about the, the engrave and the cut times that we did for the, the total three jobs. We went through in detail in the, the summary uh, in part two uh, for each of the three items. We did leather, we did acrylic, and we did an engrave on Baltic birch. And when we add up those total times, and I have them in detail in the, the video, the UMTEC cumulatively was 11 minutes and 52 seconds, so almost 12 minutes to run those three jobs. Using the same settings with the same tube uh, on the Thunder, the job was 7 minutes and 38. So that tells me a couple of things. Um, settings are same, parameters are same, so obviously there's something uh, tuned or a little bit better with the way that the head is moving and the dynamics of the actual laser. So you're going to get better performance overall with a higher performance machine. And that's basically what we saw. I think um, I could spend you know, time if I was going to use the OMTEC only to fine tune it in. We saw some of the engraves maybe weren't as good as they were over on the Thunder. Um, so I'd probably need to tune my power and settings for that specific uh, laser tube. But if we took the tests, you know, engraved with 500, engraved 500 on the Thunder, you all saw the results of what we got. And that, that really is testing the tube. So there's obviously some components within those two machines that are different that are allowing one to be faster than the other and also the results to look a little better. So anyway, there's my summary. I wanted to give um, a review of these two machines. And again, I'm not going to sway anyone as far as say you need to buy this machine over the other. I think having more data and comparison out there by the laser community helps helps you guys decide, you know, what is the best machine for me at, in the current state or time that I'm in. Um, again, you know, OMTEC is uh, a machine that is a, a budget machine that if you like to tinker and add things and play with and add on some extras, like you're going to probably want to chiller and a few other things, then then maybe that machine is right for you. If you are wanting something right out of the box, ready to go with some added features, then you need to look at the Thunder. Maybe that, that machine is for you. So I appreciate the time that you guys have watched these two, uh, part one and part two. And I know it's not the best video and production quality, but um, I'm, a, I'm just giving it to you real like it is. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I'll answer them the best that I can. And we will see you guys online. Thank you.